This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host today, Matt Johnson. And as always, we are here talking to the movers and shakers of Hawaii's local food system. Um, you can join the conversation by tweeting at ThinkTechHI, and you can also call in by dialing the number at the bottom of the screen. Coming in. So, uh, as always, we have amazing guests, and we have a co-host with me today. We have Stephanie, uh, who everyone has seen on the show before. <laughs> Thanks, Steph, for being here with me today. Thanks for having me as a co-host. This yeah. is our first time together. Sweet. First time. So, very <laughs> exciting. So, we're not quite sure how it's going to work out, but we're just going to kind of feel it yeah. and oh. see how it goes. <laughs> and Pomai's in the middle of it. Yep. And so, I'm Pumai's just going to try to actively engage with you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, our, ho our guest today is Pomai. Weigert uh, with Go Farm Hawaii. Uh, this is an agribusiness consultant. Pumai, thank you so much for being on the Thanks show. Thanks for having me. And I'm actually kind of shocked. This is what, show number 81, and I can't believe it's taken us this long to get you on the show because, in terms of movers and shakers, that's <laughs> you're like the top of my list when I think Aww, of that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Your middle name, right? <laughs> <laughs> So we don't have a lot of time and we have a lot okay. to talk about, so we're going to get right down to it. Tell me. So, Pumai, give us a little background on how you got into agriculture. Okay. My background is in travel and tourism. And then in 2002, my mom and her business partner co-founded a lavender farm called Ali Kula Lavender on Maui. And then in 2008, I went and started to work for them. They were really doing some neat stuff with agritourism, agri-innovation. They were really diversifying business. And I worked with them till 2011. And then in 2011, I there was there was such a need or demand for agritourism, mm -hmm. so I started to privately consult for other people who wanted to diversify their businesses. So I got to meet and connect with a lot of different people in the industry throughout the state, um, and then I traveled a lot, went all over the place, and then now I work for Go Farm Hawaii, which is also statewide. Wow. So I like I like that statewide vibe. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So you were mentioning agritourism, and for those in the audience who don't quite, and I'm sure that everyone's smart enough to put it together, but if you could give us a quick... <laughs> let's, let's not make assumptions here. Oh, <laughs> that everyone's smart. That you can... <laughs> that, let's not make that assumption at could all. You, <laughs> yeah. Could you give a quick, um, I guess, definition of agritourism, sure. and especially what it is here in Hawaii? Sure. So agritourism is really anywhere where agriculture and visitors can come to connect. Okay. So maybe a long time ago, I feel like people thought it had to be a big operation. In Hawaii, one of our, our pioneering agritourism venues is Kualoa Ranch. Mm. Uh, but within the last five to 10 years, we've had a lot of wineries, distilleries, uh, small farms, family farms. Agritourism doesn't have to be so big. It can just be um, a place where there's agriculture and people can come see it. So that's kind of my easy version of it. Makes sense. Presto. So to talk a little bit more, like going, like kind of staying with the ag tourism and the Maui Lavender Farm that mm -hmm. uh, I know that you and your mom were a big part of. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about that. How did that begin and, and who were the partners in that and what, what was so special about the Lavender Farm? Okay, I, one of the really special things about the Lavender Farm is it was, uh, it was a farm um, where he, Ali Chang was the, he was the farmer, mm -hmm. and my mom was in sales and marketing. So they kind of came together. He wanted people to come to his farm, but when you're just in farming, you don't really know how to open that door to another industry. Mm -hmm. So they, they made friends, and he was like, hey, can you bring 
can you bring people up here? Mm. And she just opened that tourism door and she just brought all of her people in there. Uh, one of the, the greatest innovations, though, that I think that she did that is what gets us work and why people want to hire us is she took an agricultural product and she made it an affordable luxury. Mm. And that was sort of mm. how she changed the game, how we changed the game uh, for agriculture in our own little way. Because it had never been accessible and it had never been luxurious. In Hawaii, we come from you know, a plantation culture, culture, a large, large agriculture. So being able to come to a place that was kind of boutique and we had a beautiful view and you could have tea and you could buy things, nobody really was offering that mm -hmm. at the time. So that's um, that was one key thing that they did. And then the other thing was it was very community and culture relation based. Mm -hmm. So a big part of the marketing effort was about knowing people and and giving back to the community and and collaboration, where in agriculture, it was always kind of for a long time, kind of this is what I do. And I want to I don't want to tell you my secrets about farming and I, you know, and we didn't have any secrets in farming really as far as making products and, and changing things up. So she just went out and asked people like, hey, I have lavender. I don't know how to make jelly, but do you know how to make jelly? I don't know how to make eye masks. Do you know how to make eye masks? Yeah, that's it. Can you want to make lavender infused vodka? You know? oh. Ooh. Yeah, so she really took it. She really took it out of the agricultural industry, and that was sort of, it opened all these other doors. So your mom seems like she was obviously a huge influence, not only in your life, but your career as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to see what other kind of um, mentors you had or, or any other issues that kind of made you passionate about agriculture and agritourism in general. Oh, good question. <laughs> I had a lot of mentors. I'm, I'm really, really lucky. I had a lot of, a lot of people in travel and tourism, and then also in agriculture, open doors for me and really let me into their homes, <laughs> let me onto their farms, uh, and tell me their secrets uh, to success and survival. And I, uh, Donna Ching, uh, she's the she, great Donna the Ching. Great Donna Ching who's um, been on the show? Who has been on the? <laughs> Has been on the show. I when I was in the ag leadership program, I was I was with a lot of I was really I really felt like I was out of my league. Like everyone, there were people with doctorates and inventors and politicians and directors, and I was like, lavender farm girl. And I remember going into. Um, I think like, I was in that group. You too. were in that group. You were you were well, you were like a director. Yeah, yeah he was he was pretty high profile. And I was like, uh, I I went to talk to her and I said, you know, early on because it was really intense. Like our first meeting all together, like everyone was like super hardcore egg, and I was like, ah, lotion and scones. <laughs> and I went to talk to her and I told her, oh, I don't know that I belong here with this group. And she just looked at me and she's like, if you're gonna be here, you're gonna have to know who you are and know your worth mm -hmm. and know that what you bring to the industry is what the industry needs. Because everybody here in this group needs marketing. Everybody in this group is looking to diversify business. So get over it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm still here, yeah. still going for it on Think Tech with you fine people. You know you've made it when you <laughs> make it on. Here I track. am. Here yeah. I am. Congratulations. Mm, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so you kind of started with uh, the family and your mom. That was a, a real big, uh, amazing farm that's still there, upcountry uh -huh. Maui. Uh, it's a, a popular destination. It is. There's weddings happening there. Yeah. Uh, all different kinds of there's like you can get food there as well. Yep, tea and scones, mm. uh, products, you know, culinary, um, bath and body specialty. It was that was actually one of my mom's big hustles. Was she was because people said like, oh, it couldn't really be done. Mm. She just took that idea and tried to do as many as she could. We actually would creatively debate about that a lot. Oh, yeah, like I think 85 products is good to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we've diversified. Yeah, I think we've <laughs> diversified. So then at that point, 
other businesses wanted us to help them do it too because okay. it's in agriculture i i find that it's hard for people to um, make partnerships yeah. you know they're if you don't if you weren't raised that way or you've never done that i mean in agriculture people grow stuff mm -hmm. you know so getting out there and saying like hey do you want to team up mm -hmm. it's a little weird for them and, and I think that leads into like where you come in. You kind of facilitate those meetings, that networking. Um, and you've been talking about you were a consultant, like mm -hmm. basically for agritourism. Was that part of an entity or organization or just strictly independent? So we, uh, my mom and I, well, my mom, she was the president and executive director. We kind of wore a lot of hats for the, CEO, you know, yeah. whatever hat there was to wear, um, and for the Hawaii Agritourism Association. Okay. And it's a nonprofit organization, but it allowed us to really do educational outreach. And through that educational outreach, connect with farmers who are ready to take their business to the next level because there is a certain amount of capital needed to diversify your business. Mm -hmm. So farmers really see like, oh, you can make a lot of money, mm -hmm. but you have to have some money to start with. Mm -hmm. and, and really switching from just production ag mm -hmm. to service big mental shifting. Men yeah. yeah, and I, I really like what you were talking about. They're used to being they're growing stuff, right? Or they're ranching right mm -hmm. and not not able to always look up and see the broader scope of people who are so interested in them. So I, I think that's great that you're able to offer that one-on-one. -on -one. And that's every industry too. I see it in every industry, not just agriculture, where they only see their industry right. mm -hmm. and, and what their people do and, and what their sector is doing. And, and really to remain relevant, we're having to start to go into other people, like multi-industry collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to stay relevant because it's more of a lifestyle for us. We're, mm -hmm. we, we want all things, mm -hmm. and we as in the consumer. Mm -hmm. um, before we get too much into your consulting part, talk about this trip you took around the world. <laughs> Yeah. Because I heard a little bit about it, and I was like, wait, what? What did you do? Like, So for the last two years, before I started with Go Farm, mm -hmm. I, uh, I had an incredible opportunity to travel. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to travel, and I wanted to get paid. Oh, yeah. wow. So like, whoa, the dream. The dream. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> the dream. Everyone's dream. Everyone's dream. So I, I went to my mom, momager, slave driver, mentor, all of that. <laughs> and I said, I want to travel. And she's like, you're going to need money. And I was like, no, I don't. No, I don't. So I tried to travel without money for about a month. And then I came back and I was like, OK, that's not going to work out. And we decided, OK, what, would our, what, what do we really do? What do I love to do? What am I going to do when I travel? Mm. And what I'm going to do when I, when I travel is the same thing that I do always in my life. Like, I love to go to farms. I love to farm tour, I'm trying to find local. I'm trying to find sustainable. So we wrote a grant with. Um, um, Hawaii County mm -hmm. to do global agritourism research to see if Hawaii was globally competitive. Mm -hmm. And that was able to fund me doing comparisons um, in all different parts of the world. I also did a grant with uh, the Department of Agriculture. Okay. And that one was statewide, so I got to go to each island mm -hmm. and look for different farmers because that's the thing is people will always come to us mm -hmm. and they'll want to know I want this. Do you know who does it? Yeah. So we're more of like a resource. But there's so many hidden farms out there yeah. there's, that, that aren't even really hidden. Yeah. But there's no like list or there's no way to find them. So um, those, two, those two grants um, really took me to the next level because I, ha I got this global knowledge mm. for Hawaii and then this statewide where, knowledge. Where, where, where did you go? So... I did some comparing, some global comparing oh, uh, in got? the yep yeah, in the <laughs> in the in the Caribbean. So I did, I went all over. So I did Jamaica, uh, Puerto Rico, Belize. I got to go to Dubai, Iceland. Yeah, I'm throwing out my exotic ones too. Like these, these just happen to happen. Uh, Europe, Japan, you know those kind of those kind of fun places. Well, we're definitely going to hear all more about the trip. Unfortunately, we have to take a quick break. Quick break! So we're going to take about 60 seconds, and we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. 
Aloha, I'm Carol Mon Lee, Think Tech Hawaii's Volunteer Chief Operating Officer and occasional host, and this is Minky. For the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online, web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks, Think Tech will run only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so Think Tech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming. I've already made my donation and look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, www.thanksforthinktech.cosvox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, thank you, mahalo, and shishe for your generosity. We're back to Life Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host Matt Johnson here today with Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie, for joining me. And we are talking to Pomai Weigart from Go Farm Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even gotten to the Go Farm no, Hawaii part because there's just, just so many other interesting things to away. talk about. Just chipping away. <laughs> so we're going to dive right back in. Okay, it. back in. Uh, so right before the break, we were talking about this amazing, what did you call it? Uh, comparing, global, global compare, comparing, comparing mm -hmm. uh, that you were doing, that you got paid to go do. Mm -hmm. So you were just starting to tell us where you globally compared. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, tell us more about that. I think we ended in Asia. I, I think we ended in Asia. <laughs> Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Always, yeah. Always ends in Asia. <laughs> and, and, and I feel like my my biggest takeaways were, or the whole point of comparing was, is Hawaii ahead or are we behind? And in terms of in terms of travel revenues, mm. as far as agritourism, as far as economy. Like, why are people trying to go to Hawaii? Are people trying to go to Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Are we losing market to other places? And I chose the Caribbean because it offers a lot of the same things. Right. And you you can do it for a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. And especially because we were trying to target a lot of the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Like, the East Coast is going to go to the Caribbean. Why are they going to come all the way to Hawaii? So really looking at how agriculture fits into the tourism economic engine. Uh, because in Hawaii, nobody really moves for any other industry. Right. Yeah, like there's tourism and then there's everybody else. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, and the military, mm -hmm. you know. So that was um, what I found was, I mean, every day we're kind of just on the cusp. Mm -hmm. You know, there we have a lot of pros here, but we are, be we are behind competitively mm -hmm. in a lot of different areas. So agriculture, you know, really can be translated into tourism in so many ways that the traveler wants. Mm -hmm. So the top things in tourism right now are cuisine, culture, and adventure. Mm. And again, agriculture can fit into all those things if we know how to do that. Nice. Um, so that's that, and, and that our pipeline to Asia is pretty, mm -hmm. Is growing and is strong. So th these were just some takeaways. See, it does all this, end it, in it, is, it is. It is. All this comparing was super relevant, and and because a lot of the travelers today are international travelers. Mm -hmm. So that sort of domestic travel market, we already have that. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to get, or the people that are we're trying to market to travel all over the world? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my big takeaway. Anyway, that ended. <laughs> That came the to a, the dream ended. That came to a close, and and that ended this summer. So, did private consulting. Was trying to figure out like what am I going to do with my life? Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to come back to a real world mm -hmm. after you've been after in like being paid to travel the world. <laughs> How do you come back to a place? And I was really lucky because Go Farm Hawaii was looking for someone who had experience in agribusiness marketing. And I read the description, and I was like, oh my god. It's like, I wrote it. Uh, <laughs> and, and I called them, and I said, hey, what does this mean? And what's Go Farm Hawaii again? Uh, Go Farm Hawaii is a program 
that runs through CTAR uh, at the University of Hawaii. It's statewide. It's a new farmer training program. That's a center for tropical agriculture mm -hmm. and resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boom. You got Ooh, it. I'm you got it. it. Win I'm for you. <laughs> Win for you. Win for you. Yep. So I just started with them um, in September. And uh, I'm so, I love it. I am so excited to be there because before I went to go farm, you had to have a, you had to be able to afford me. And, <laughs> you know, and, and I was used to getting, like, you were already, you already had a farm, you were already successful, you were mm -hmm. already doing production, you already had a brand, you already had these things. And I had to come in and sort of, like, help you reorganize stuff, you know, business therapy, right. really. Yeah. Where now I get them like right at the beginning, yeah. so we can we can give them all these tips and these ideas as they're developing what kind of business they want to be. Yeah, you know, so it's um, it's really exciting stuff. Yeah, I really I really like how you know you keep you talk that you're a consultant and you had all these great mentors and teachers mm -hmm. in your life and that you're evolving into that now for mm -hmm. new farmers and talking about that that framework of including agritourism from the beginning, mm -hmm. especially here in Hawaii. Um, and you've been talking about, you know, you had, you had to be able to afford me for a site visit to come out and do this one-on-one -on -one business therapy. I thought you could talk a little bit about the other avenues you do outreach, you know, either if it's like workshop series or it, are you doing one-on-one -on -one site visits still? Or are you just working with GoFarm students? Funny you should say that. Oh. Uh, me and Matt. Sounds like a plug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag ad. <laughs> <laughs> me and Matt were just on a, a statewide uh, women farmers series tour where we went to each island and we sort of shared our experiences in the industry uh, with ORCD. Mm -hmm. um, and or CD Oahu Research Resource Conservation oh. Development Council. Boom. That's okay. I just no. want you to talk about See, how you do all, workshops. Don't worry about the acronyms. Yeah. We'll, we'll I want translate. you to talk about I your workshop. Just, I should have just pointed to you. Um, so in those kinds of workshops, it's a actually any workshop that there yeah. is. It's really an opportunity for people to come together and and network. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest keys to marketing. Is is your network mm -hmm. is knowing people. So in my in my part, that is what I'm trying to share with people because it's it's hard to know people. And a lot of times people think that they need to know a lot of people where you only need to know like two. Like two. You. They need two, to know you. <laughs> <laughs> two people that know a lot of people. Right. So that was um, that that is probably one of my biggest keys that I think people can take away mm -hmm. from from being in a workshop with yeah. me. It's sort of like, hey, get out there. And also, one of my big things that I, I like to let them know is be brave. You gotta be brave to be out there, and it's hard for people in any industry. Because it's scary. Grow. That's fantastic. Um, talk a little bit about, so you're, you're consulting now, you're doing these workshops, mm -hmm. um, you're helping out beginning farmers with Go Farm Hawaii. What what kind of <clears throat> projects or I guess actual operations that are out there now or maybe you see happening in the future that get you excited? Ooh, Ooh. that's a good question. Thank you. It's loaded. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, the culinary scene over the last five years has really taken off, and and you know every good chef now has a good farmer. But we're seeing market shifts in food manufacturers and food manufacturing. So people looking for locally made products um, and and where they can visit either the place where some of the ingredients came from or where they're making these products. Uh, and And in marketing, really understanding the story of whatever food mm -hmm. people are eating. So that is kind of, you know, culinary... The food industry, that's, I don't see that dying off, but all these little sort of niche spinoffs of, of the culinary industry is really exciting because we grow all that food. Mm -hmm. So even as a traveler, when you go someplace, you're looking for like, what 
are locals eating or local food or where do I find these things? Mm -hmm. And a little bit of the sad thing for Hawaii is we throw a lot of local food away, mm -hmm. even though one of our goals is local food production. Mm -hmm. So it's really about creating these avenues where uh, people have access. Mm -hmm. Access is a big uh, is a big thing. And um, seeing a a continual evolution of the farm to table scene in Hawaii is, is big. So for people who don't farm, I feel like for people who farm, farm to table is like what they live. Right. You know, right. and then for other people, that's just like a dining idea a that they're idea. A lot, what they're going to do. And um, that's great for the agricultural industry because uh, that's their lives. That's our lives. We always farm to table. Mm -hmm. So being able to provide those experiences for people in so many different ways and so many different places um, really, I, I feel like, really positions the new farmer, the young farmer, um, anyone who's trying to do something different than large commodity egg. Mm -hmm. So I feel like those opportunities, I see them a lot with our gold farmers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's incredible. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, boom. Uh, just someone just whispered in my ear. We've oh. got to wrap it up. Okay. But uh, thank you so much for sharing your stories about starting off with Lavender Farm with your mom and going around the world. Traveling the world, the dream. Seeing dream. everything that's going on and now working with beginning and also established farms, helping them mm -hmm. set up their ag tourism operations. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I also want to announce that not only are you the guest on the show today, but you're also going to be joining as a host. Woo! So thank you for So you're going to get more team. of me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting lots more of you. Lots more. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, thank you so much for co-hosting today. You, that was a lot of fun. I know. And as always, uh, you can reach us mm, sometimes on Thursdays, <laughs> Ahoy Food and Farmer Series. And we will see you next week, two weeks from now. Aloha. Aloha.